in this section we want to hit a few topics uh, where we talk about the specific characteristics of distributions that we're interested in. Specifically we're going to talk about center, spread, and then identifying outliers given two different types of circumstances, whether we're dealing with a symmetric distribution or a skewed distribution. So we'll start off with measures of center. Um, the three most common measures, which you've probably seen in courses before, even if you haven't talked a lot about them a lot, most people are fairly familiar with the idea of mean, median, and mode. So to get the mean of a data set, we add up all of the numbers, divide by the number of numbers in that data set. To get the median, we arrange all of the numbers from smallest to largest, and then find the number that's in the middle of that data set. And the mode is just the number that occurs most frequently. In this class, we're primarily going to focus on the mean and the median. The mode is primary, primarily useful when we're dealing with categorical data. So categorical data, again, being different categories. So if we're talking about number of people with brown hair, number of people with blonde hair, number of people with red hair, we would look at which of those categories occurs most frequently. So it works a little bit better for categorical data. So this gets us down to two common measures of center, mean and, me mean and median. Um, there's actually kind of a lot more than those. There are multiple different ways of finding the center of a data set. Uh, for instance, in the Olympics and other events where contestants are scored by judges, they'll typically throw out the lowest and highest value and then average what's left. That's another approach. In this class, though, we're primarily going to focus on the mean and median. So we're going to talk a little bit about why we have those two different measures and when each one is appropriate. So the first thing we want to do is kind of establish a, a rule of thumb for the rest of this course. From this point forward, anytime we talk about the average of a list of numbers or the average of a distribution, average of a data set, what we really mean is determine which measure either the mean or median is more appropriate and report that value. So the mean is typically referred to as the average. But technically, the mean and median, they're both methods for finding an average or for finding the center of a data set. So in this class, average is going to be our general term to refer to either of those two types of measures. So we still have the question, why do we need two different ways to find the center of a data set? So consider this example below. Assuming we surveyed nine different people to collect information on the average annual income for Americans. So with the given data that we have, the mean would be 35000 $750 a year. The median would be 33500 or about 34000 So we see that the mean and the median are quite similar. But that could change if this data set that I just made up these numbers, all of a sudden we add in another data set. Let's say that as part of our sampling, one of the people that we selected was Kobe Bryant, NBA, NBA basketball player. And according to his 2013 contract renewal, he makes a little over $24 million a year. So that's not including endorsements. That's just his basic contract for just playing basketball. So now if we recalculated the mean of this new data set, the mean would become 2726000 $222.20, and the median would be $35,000. So this is an example of how we say that, or why we say that the median is resistant to extreme values or to outliers. So in this case, obviously, Kobe Bryant's salary is significantly higher than any of the other values in our data set. Even though we add that in there, the median isn't changed very much. So originally the median was about 34,000, it's jumped to 35,000. So not a big difference. While the mean 
is very clearly in this case not resistant to outliers. So we add in this really large salary for an individual person, and that jumps the, the mean salary from about 36000 up to well over $2 million, closer to $3 million a year. So at this point, this number is very artificially inflated by this one extreme value. So this no longer is a very good measure of the center of this data because this number is higher than everybody's salary in this group except for one. So in certain cases, the median gives us a better measure, a better idea of what the average or typical value is. So if our data is highly skewed, like the data set above would be with this one large value, or has outliers, and we should probably say multiple outliers, one outlier on its own may not be enough, we should use the median as our measure of center. And the reason, again, is this idea of being resistant to outliers. One really extreme value doesn't greatly affect that median. We still get a very similar number for that measure of center. So let's take a look at an example of calculating these values. So in the table below, we have the number of points per game scored by the Chicago Bears in the 2012 regular season. If we flip over to StatCrunch, where I've got this data input already, we can select Stat, Summary Stats, and then Columns. This is going to allow us to access a variety of different calculations for a given data set. So selecting Variable 1, we can select Mean, Median, and we'll go ahead and calculate the skewness as well. So we'll calculate those three values for our data set. In this case, giving us a value of 23.4 for the mean, a value of 23 for the median, and a skewness of 0.57. So in this case, with a mean equal to 23.44, the median equal to 23, and a skewness of 0.57, what we see is the mean and the median ended up with very similar results. So the two values are very, very close. And based off that skewness, we have data that's moderately skewed, so not highly skewed. So since that data in that example was only moderately skewed, we can use the mean as our measure of center. Now looking ahead at our next example, in this case we're looking at the, as of 2012, the legal limit for people to possess medical marijuana. So in different states that were approving this as a legal uh, entity, there were still limits on the possession limit. So what we can do is take this data, consider it in StatCrunch, and consider the same thing. We want to look at the skewness to determine whether the mean or median would be appropriate and see whether those values are different. So again, selecting stat, summary stats, and then columns. In this case, my data is in variable two. I'll select the mean, median, and skewness. So in this case, we have a skewness of a little over 2.2, so about 2.3. So we have data that's highly skewed, and we have a median of 2.5, a median of 5.4. So depending on the context, those numbers might be larger or farther apart, but in this case, if we're talking about ounces of a substance that you can have on you, a difference of 2.5 ounces and almost 5.5 ounces is quite a bit of difference. So in this case, the skewness is higher, meaning that, that mean, the mean is going to be inflated by some of those larger values, so our median is the more appropriate measure to use in this case. And we can probably tell that, uh, or guess that we would have seen some skew there, since if we look at Oregon and Washington, they had some exceptionally high values in terms of the number of ounces for that possession limit. So what we see in example three here is that since our data was highly skewed, since we had that skewness of 2.28, so much larger than one, in this case we need to use the median as our measure of center because the mean is inflated by those extreme values. So we consider the mean to be our 
best measure of center. If we're talking about the center of a data set, the average of a data set, the mean is the number that we want to use. It's preferable because of the way we calculate it. It takes in all the values for the data set into consideration versus the median, which bases it all off just that one number that's in the middle. So the mean is sort of the best, in quotes there, um, that's kind of an unofficial designation for it, but our best measure of center. And then we use the median as our measure of center or as our backup measure of center if the mean is inappropriate. So again, this comes down to skewness. If our skewness is less than negative 1, then our data is highly skewed. Or if it's greater than positive 1, our data is highly skewed. So that would mean we would have to look at using the median as our result. If our data is moderately skewed, so it's between negative 1 and 1, we can look at using the mean as that value. 